In this video, we're going to look at the basics of how to use the Character Physics plugin to animate biped characters to do various things like the animations you see here. Keep in mind this is an introductory tutorial. You can do much more sophisticated things. Since this is just a video to get you started, we've chosen a really simple Roblox character for this introduction. I've already built a rig inside of this character. It's not really a rigging tutorial. Feel free to build your own rig in whatever way you like. One thing to note, the Character Physics plugin doesn't currently support disconnected bones. I should say it doesn't support disconnected bones with an offset. If your bone is disconnected and it is offset like this, Blender supports armatures where that can still function as a parent and it works just fine. The Character Physics plugin will basically treat the base here and the tail here as if they're the same point in space, so it will sort of snap things together. So if you already have a rig set up that has this kind of configuration and you want to use it with Character Physics, then you'll just make a connected bone between these two and then it will function the way that it's intended. In future versions of the Character Physics plugin, I will probably just figure out a way to support that. But for now, just make sure all of your bones are connected and none of them are disconnected with an offset like this. And now uh, he's, you know, set up to where I can animate him the way that I want to. And, you know, like I said, if you have an existing rig, then uh, you can build a character physics rig and then constrain bones in your existing rig to this one if you want to use this animation paradigm. Uh, that way you don't have to throw away whatever you've already got set up. And you can also save out your animations that way with your existing rigs configuration uh, if you want to export it into a game or whatever. So first thing we want to do for the character physics add-on is we're going to duplicate the character physics rig and now I can take this guy and set up my pose target for this. And this should already be set to animated down here under the record playback tab. Um, record playback, animated. And now if I run animation, he's just going to fall over, which is what I expected it to do because there's nothing really keeping it stabilized. So maybe the first thing that you would want to do to start playing with this is add a stabilizer. So we're going to pause the animation here. Um, I suppose I should turn on screencast keys. And with the animation paused, um, I am going to reset it. Under the setup is the reset option. And I'm going to add a rotation target to sort of stabilize this so that it doesn't just fall over. So we want to go to our influence targets and add a rotation target. And set it to whatever, 0.1 probably, eh, 0.15 I'm going to guess is about what I want. And so now the head is going to try to stay upright. And I can make him stand up using this if I, let's see. I need to turn the strength up a little bit to get him to actually stand up straight. There we go. Now he can stand up straight. Although he looks kind of like he's weirdly drunk in a world where the laws of physics don't behave correctly. So uh, let's just hit reset and see what it looks like. Okay. So now he's more or less standing up the way that I want him to. Um, I can, of course, do whatever I want in terms of controlling this rig. So you see we've got the physics working. Um, if I want him to be further stabilized, then I have to put in some extra points and whatever to keep him more or less stable. 
And maybe I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to add a head target. And let's turn the, let's see. So spring and directional. We want to turn the spring value up a little bit. We want him to still be able to move around sort of naturally, so we'll set this to a really small value, 0 0.001. And then I can use this to sort of influence um, where he stands a little bit more. And I could put those on the legs also if I wanted to, or whatever. It just depends on kind of the animation I'm trying to create here and what effects I want to go for. And it looks like my influence target is not really where I wanted it, so I'm going to grab this and snap it into where I wanted it, right there. Yep. Okay, now, if I try to make this guy walk or something, uh, he's going to keep wanting to follow this thing, he's going to keep coming back to it, so for the sake of making a walk cycle, I'll either need to have this like move along with the character, while he's trying to walk, or I can get rid of it and put in a different kind of target, or whatever. So we'll do some experiments with that. Uh, but for now, uh, I just wanted to show sort of the basics of, you know, getting the effects of the character physics plugin, where, you know, when the head wobbles, currently it's trying to match the rotation of this target, so rotating the head makes the whole thing move around to try to match it. Um, but now I can get some sort of physics environments sort of effects by using these influence targets or using the rig and he doesn't just simply fall over to have a little bit more ability to move him around um, but he still looks like he's you know got gravity and velocity and things that he has to contend with. So maybe for uh, starting out, we'll do a walk cycle animation. And for that, um, just reset this for now and hide everything but this, and we'll make a walk cycle. With a walk cycle, everything is reciprocating. Everything is going back and forth. Um, basically, we just create an animation of stuff going back and forth. So. This is going to be our neutral position, and I'm going to keyframe it at frame 1, our starting frame, and then I'm going to duplicate it so that we would go back to the start at frame 1 more than what it's set to right here. So at frame 30, it starts over. And then we can start animating the back and forth motion of the different parts. So we know that our legs are going to swing like back, like that. And then they're going to swing all the way forward and then back again. So here we want them to swing forward and now that should be kind of a... Yeah, that's not terrible. But we actually want that to be... I don't know, I think it needs to go back a little further. So where it goes back, we're going to go back a little bit further. Yeah, that's about right. And you'll notice how it slows down, and that has to do with how it's interpolating the F-curves. And you could go and screw around in the F-curve editor if you wanted to. Uh, I find it easier to just like do this. So I'm going to put our cursor over frame 1 here and duplicate it and drag it to frame 30. And maybe just do that again at frame 30 and drag it to frame 60. And then we'll do the same thing here. and that way we have sort of padding on both sides and that makes our motion, reciprocating motion, look nice and clean, which is what we want. All right, so we need to get some reciprocating motion for this part of the leg now. And it's already 
pointed down in the correct place. So when it starts to get to like right here, we're going to want to start swinging our leg upwards so that it clears the ground. And actually maybe like right here it'll start swinging upwards. So we're going to do like that. Actually, I think it would look better if it was like right there. That's pretty good. And then let's see, it goes like this. Yeah, it looks like a walking motion. Okay, uh, we probably won't get enough ground clearance that way, so we're going to have to make the hips go up and down also. So let's work on these hip bones a little bit. We want the hips to be down right here, and then we want them to be up right here. So that the, uh, we get the ground clearance that we want. So we're going to move these up something like, oh, I don't know, 25 maybe? And then this one is going to be negative 25. what we want so that they're down when the foot is on the ground and they're up when the foot is not on the ground. All right and then we also need to uh, basically fix the fact that this rotation is now funky um, because of the hip movement and Maybe a simple way to do that would be to just turn off inherit rotation. Seemed to work pretty well. Alright, so now we want to take this thing and duplicate it. And duplicate it this way. Maybe we'll just do that enough to get padding on both sides. All right. Uh, now we just need these things to be offset. So we're working with a 30 frame area, which means we want to go half that for one side, uh, which means we select all of one side, we select all of these, and we... Hmm. Actually, we forgot to duplicate this, so let's fix that. then the other side is going to be asynchronous. So our right side will be asynchronous with our left side. So we'll move that 15 degrees should be the right amount. And now we have our walk cycle for the legs, which looks pretty good. 
And of course you could tweak it. You know, the legs would actually swing more under the center on a real person. But this is a Roblox character and his feet are big blocks. So having the legs not swing under the center of him is probably fine. Um, so we also want to get our arm swinging motion. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just do a similar thing where we'll make sure we're on frame one here. Put a keyframe, duplicate it, go to frame 30. And then in the middle, let's see. We will actually be at the same location, but back here we're going to be swung back. And then over here we're going to be swung forward. And we'll do this trick again. And we'll grab one side and we will offset it by 15 again. And I don't know if like like how this synchronizes with the legs exactly. Not completely sure. So I'm just gonna move it until it looks kind of like what I would expect. But I need to not run out of frames here. So I'm gonna duplicate this again. Set one side by 15 again. All right. And I don't think that the legs swing exactly like the arms. I think they're actually uh, exactly asynchronous with. So, like the right arm would be back when the right leg is forward and vice versa. So, I think this needs to move like 15. Um, they both need to move. 15 frames. So that the right arm synchronizes with the left leg and the left arm synchronizes with the right leg. I could look up an animation of someone running to see if that's correct, but I think it's probably close enough for what I'm doing right now. When we make our guy walk now, he is going to actually try to walk. And I've got this set as a collider. I guess I forgot to mention that. Um, up here in the colliders thing, I have this uh, set to collider and I have the friction set at 1. You set the friction at 0, he sort of slides all around. It's kind of funny. And he's trying to walk, but he can't walk because this is actually a spring target and it's dragging him. And so he's kind of like, I can't walk, what's going on? But if we wanted to like move the spring target along with him, Whoa. Uh, then he can walk. So we could, you know, just very simply animate this spring target to move with him. And we could get some kind of walk motion. It's really horrible because I'm moving it manually. But if you, like, keyframed its animation, that would be one way to get him to walk. Um, might actually work to just delete that. Let's see, what's he do? He's, like, kind of freaking out. Oh, look, he might be able to get going. No! It's too hard. Uh, yeah. So to get him to, to walk and not just flop around, you can play with the settings a little bit. So, for example, let's see, I don't think I need setup. Probably need physics. Gravity is probably way too strong. That's one part. It's making this hard for him to walk. Oh, look at him go now. There we go. Look at that. Swagger. Yeah, baby. 
So there's your basic. Whoa, where'd he go? He's just gonna walk off into space here. Uh, resetting it. Okay. So now he hits the ground. Takes him a bit of effort to get going, but now he's walking. He's looking pretty good. Now, if you wanted to create a walk cycle for a game, uh, you could just use this walk animation. So let me show you what that would look like. If we were to take this walk and put it on a Roblox character, it would look like that, which is incredibly boring. And you could do a whole lot of manual work to try to get it to look more like he's walking around, but that's pointless. If you have the character physics engine, it does that work for you. So let's uh, go ahead and make a really cool looking walk cycle for this character. So I'm going to turn animated back on and I'm going to get him walking again. Hopefully we'll just reset it and we'll let him start over from the beginning. Go back to frame one and kind of get him comfortably walking. It takes him a minute to get going. Alright, now that he's walking pretty well, we're gonna go to record playback settings, and we're gonna turn this on so that it will record, and we probably want to record like every third frame, so we're gonna skip frames. Well, maybe we'll skip one frame. And uh, the reason I want to do that is because I want to maybe speed up the walk cycle. Uh, I guess you could make like just a slow walk cycle and then you could do another version of it where it's sped up. So if we scale this up, or sorry, if we, if we skip a frame and then we scale it down, then it will have the effect of speeding it up. So I let's just go ahead and try that. And we don't really want to record the location for a walk cycle because the location of the character, you know, his movement around in space, is going to be handled by your game engine. So we're going to do rotation only. And then he's already walking pretty good. Uh, we want to set the record frame to whatever you want to record to. And I've named his action Awesome Walk here, all caps, because my caps lock was on. You can name it whatever you want and it will generate an action for him. Uh, make sure your record frame is set and make sure in end frame is set to something that allows you to record enough and then just let it run and it's gonna record those frames. And I'm sure I've got enough for a good sample there. So now I want to turn animated off so that he's not running and I want to select Awesome Walk. Now when we play that back, uh, you can see it's not looping in the correct location. So we want to select all of our bones, and then we want to select all of these, and we want to move it until it loops in the correct place. Or maybe the easiest way to get that would be like, we want to find the spot where he's all the way back or like maybe like that foot is all the way down right there and then um, yeah so maybe that will work that looks pretty good and from there you could go in and adjust it but you've already got a whole lot of subtle movement it looks way better than that super boring one. And, you know, something else that you can do when you're playing around with the walk cycle, we're just going to close this out. Turn the animation back on here and reset it. And you can play with things like how floppy his arms are, for example. So we're going to go ahead and make this empty also work as a spring target so that he can kind of hang out in space here 
And then, like, say we wanted these bones in the arm to be, like, way more floppy. Or, actually, let, let's say we, we just wanted the whole walk cycle to be way more, like, lazy or something. Then we can go into the physics settings and turn the angular solvers down really low. <laughs> Maybe not that low, but... Uh, he's kind of jello-y. Could make it a lot more determined. And it makes it a lot more stiff, so it more exactly matches what the rig itself is doing. You know, if you turn the angular up. So, maybe something like seven would give it, you know, some interesting, or, I don't know, 15? Can't remember what I had it at before. Yeah, that's not, not terrible. You can also play with the velocity. And say you wanted to just get kind of a lazy motion on one particular bone or a certain subset of bones, you can go into uh, the physics settings for each bone and angle force, you set that to like zero, then, you know, this is going to just be super floppy. Something a little more realistic or reasonable. You know, see how his arm's super floppy did that with the other arm. What did I set it to? 0 0.01. So now his arms are all kind of jello-y. You can get some interesting effects by playing with the physics and playing with the uh, forces. Uh, to make your walk cycle whatever you want, you could make several different kinds of walk cycles. You could make a swagger kind of walk cycle and a determined kind of walk cycle and angry. I don't know just by playing with some of these settings and then you know you can record them separately and save out different kinds of walk cycles for different moods for your character. Alright, now I want to do something just for fun that I think is going to be interesting. Uh, something that you can easily do with the character physics plugin that would be difficult to animate normally. I'm going to have a wrecking ball come down and smash this guy's face and maybe knock him flying into a wall and have him, like, land limp on the ground. So, I already modeled a wrecking ball really simply with just a basic chain and I just did automatic weights so that I can control it. And I didn't work very hard on it, uh, but it basically works. Definitely good enough for a tutorial. And I want to move it to a place where I know for sure it's going to hit my guy in the head. And I don't want to wait too long, so maybe about here. And I'll have it like right there, and should make for a good headshot. Now I want to, we'll just pause this guy for now turn his animation off, and I want to make this function as a physics object. So i got to duplicate this for the pose target. And now when this guy runs, yep, now it's behaving with physics. And I want to adjust some things so that it behaves a little bit more realistically. Um, I'm going to turn the linear iterations up quite a bit. And then I want to turn up the... You know, actually, I've got a better idea here. Since I'm doing spheres around the... Um, the nodes, or like the, there's a sphere collider around this. 
going to go ahead and delete this. And I'm going to put this in the center, roughly. And now, get rid of that post target. Make an armature that matches. And now, it's set to reset at frame one. Now I want to change the size of the uh, radius, the collide radius, at that point. And so that's going to be the tail radius. We're going to set it up until it matches the size that I want. And that will let it behave basically like a sphere around that, which is what I have here. Now, when this falls, it lands about like it should. And it's giving that little bit of bounce. If I want to get rid of that, then I can clear parents. And now it... Uh, a little bit better match for where it lands. Um, and I want to be able to have this swing, so I'm going to put a spring target on it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is reset it. And then up here, I'm going to add a head target and set it to 1. So now I can control this. And I want it to be way more floppy than that, so I'm going to turn the angular iters down to 1. That's pretty reasonable. I think it will also be a little bit more realistic if I set the mass of this final bone quite a bit higher. So we're going to set the mass of this bone to 20 and see what happens. Yeah, now it behaves as if the uh, wrecking ball is much heavier than the bones it's connected to, or the like the chain that it's connected to. All right, now we need to be able to pick it up in the air. So we're going to add a spring target here. I'm going to add a tail target and make it a spring. And now we can hold this thing up so that it's ready to fall down and smash our guy in the face. And then what we'll do is we'll set this to zero, and it's going to come down and hit him in the face. And I want it to move faster than this, so I'm going to set the subframes to three. this back to 1, and now when I set this to 0, it might be a little bit too fast, so we'll set the subframes to 2, and then we'll just amp up the gravity a little bit and see how that does. Try that again. Pretty good. Maybe try a little bit more gravity. <clears throat> that should work. And then we want to be able to consistently get this thing to fall at just the right spot. So I think I'm going to go ahead and record the animation of this thing falling so that I can play it back and move it around on the timeline, just sort of easily control that. So we're just going to go to um, the record playback settings down here. and. 
let's see, make the end frame, you know, 70. Well, I don't know, we'll just make it large so that we make sure we get everything we want. And then uh, it's set to animated, and we're gonna do location and rotation, and then we're going to let it run, and we're gonna just switch this thing off once it's running. So we'll get it running like that. And are we recording? I think we're recording. No, we aren't recording yet. So we're gonna start recording. And then we're gonna go into this guy and set it to zero. Wait until it sort of stops moving. Should be good. And the action is named kittens will rule by default, so we'll select kittens will rule. And we will turn off this. And now we have a recording of this playing that whole fall animation. So now we don't have to compute that. And we need to be able to keep this guy walking, but let the animation play down here. And currently, it's picking up this animation and it's looping it in this section. And so that is from frame 1 to frame 29. And the action on this guy is walk. So we're going to go to this uh, physics right here. And we're going to do advanced playback. And we want to set the start frame to 1 and set the end frame to 29 down here uh, so it matches what's on the armature where we want it to loop. And then current frame, we'll set that to 1. And now set this guy to animated. Oh, something is broken. What did I break? Pause it for a second. Okay, so the thing that was broken was this was set to the wrong action. Uh, sorry, not there. Down here. So if you set it to that action and you try to make it walk, it freaks out. So you got to make sure that you select the appropriate action, which in this case is walk. So we're in the chord playback. And under playback, we selected advanced, and then we selected the action walk. And we want to clear uh, parts of that rotation that are not what we want. And now it's targeting frames 1 through 29, and it shouldn't matter what we set our timeline to. It'll keep walking and it'll keep playing back that frame range, which will allow our character to go uh, where we want him to go. So I want to reset this and figure out like at what point he walks into this thing. Current frame 1, and this should give us our baseline for where his head basically gets to where this thing swings down and lands right here. So takes him a minute to get walking. Should be identical if we reset everything correctly. And we want him to get hit in the head like right about there. So we're going to move this so that it falls to right probably about there. Should be fine. And this guy is a separate object. I set it to a collider. And then in theory we should be able to just let it smack him in the face. Okay, so in theory now when my guy walks up there, uh, if he walks the exact same way he did when I recorded this, then this thing's gonna come down and hit him in the face. Oh yeah, it worked. So he's definitely having an issue with that wrecking ball thing.
uh, in order to get it to now behave the way that I want it to, we're going to have to animate the walk cycle turning off right then, and his body going sort of limp right then, and some other things. So we'll work on that next. So I guess we need to reset this back to the start. Maybe I'll just turn frame reset on so that it's a little easier. And frame one. So now when we go back to frame one, he goes back to right there. And um, I actually want this current frame to reset also. So I'm actually going to pause the video and update the add-on and edit the code so that when frame reset is on, or maybe I'll put a property in here where I can do frame reset on this also. So let me just pause it real quick and write a bunch of code. Alright, so I quickly added a feature for this tutorial uh, that will be in current version of the physics character physics plugin when you get it. Uh, I can set the reset frame here so that if we go back to a current frame of 1, so like right now, current frame is at 11, if we go back to frame 1, then the current frame also gets set back to 1, so that the advanced animation playback can basically be reset, so that you can get repeatable, consistent results. And now when I play this, uh, I can reset it back to the start, and it should give me the exact same walk cycle and the exact same animation of him getting hit in the face. So now I need to change it so that when he gets hit in the face, it doesn't just, you know, sort of push into him and he tries to stand up and he keeps walking. So we're going to very carefully advance this, and at some point before he gets hit in the face, we're going to turn off the effects of the stabilizer. So we'll animate this such that, like right now, it's set to m uh, maintain its rotation at 0.5. I'm going to keyframe that, and then we're going to go one frame and we're going to turn it off. And keyframe it again with it turned off. And now, for some reason, this thing keeps messing up. Walk. Don't know why it does that. So now we have this thing keyframed such that when we get up to here and he gets hit in the face, in theory he won't try to stand back up again. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Of course he's still trying to walk, which I don't really want that because I want it to be like he, uh, you know, was severely concussed and went limp. So. Need to figure out like exactly where he flies up in the air again, and right there he gets hit. Now we want to set this. Um, we could maybe make a twitch animation. So we'll just create a new action on this guy. Make sure that one is set to have a fake user. Uh, close that down. And create a new one. We're going to call it Twitch. And it's just going to be like something creepy. We'll keyframe the rotation. We'll go one frame and we'll do like this individual rotation set. Just rotate everything a tiny bit and keyframe it. And then we'll go one more frame. We'll rotate it sort of the other way a little bit. And 
let's see what that looks like. It's maybe not aggressive enough. So Yeah, that looks like he's spazzing out from severe brain damage. It's not dark at all. <clears throat> okay, so I'm okay with that. So we want to take this and copy it to our lock at, like, I don't know, something that we can easily remember. So I will just do it like 250. So here's our, our Twitch animation. So from 250 to 253. Okay, so our Twitch animation is currently playing. We want to go back to our walk animation. And we need to like clear the um, rotations on that. And we need to get him back to um, the right number of frames. So he is currently Let's see, in frame is 29. Okay, there we go. So that's the, the right number of frames for him to walk and get smacked in the face. And then we want to watch for when he gets smacked in the face. So like right there, um, we're going to go ahead and keyframe the start and end frames. So currently the start frame is one, so we'll keyframe that. And then we're gonna switch to 250 and keyframe it and 254 and keyframe it. Uh, we need to make sure that this is set to walk. And he walks over here, gets hit with the wrecking ball. And he's supposed to be at more of a t t uh, more of that twitchy thing. It's not exactly what I wanted. Maybe the end frame needs to be less or... Oh, I think I know what the problem is. So I played with the settings a little bit and I got the twitch frame, or the, the twitch action to look a little bit better uh, by setting it to just do alternate between two frames. So now when he gets hit by the wrecking ball he goes into, ah, Spasm City. He's just, like, freaking out. Um, the reason that he's sort of up off of the ground is it has to do with the size of the colliders around this. And if you wanted to get this to be super accurate, or if you wanted him to spaz out even more, uh, or whatever, you, you could do a lot to adjust this. Uh, this is just a basic tutorial, so hopefully that will give you an idea of how to do at least some things. So uh, feel free to comment and question. And as always, you can email me at characterphysics101 at gmail if you have any questions. But for now, I think we're going to call it. So thanks for watching to the end, people.